Okay guys, do you want to meet Twister? Do you want to meet Twister? Here's Twister. He is 16 week old pug. We just got him. Um, the kids have had a ball with him. You know, we're stuck in the house so much. By the way, there's chapters to this video if you want to skip to chapters. But uh, this is Twister and we've been stuck in the house so much and this has been very entertaining for the kids so we went to Petco my wife did and first started looking at them five thousand dollars for a pug at Petco I'm not kidding five thousand dollars so we went on Craigslist found a found this guy in Tulsa medical student bought him and couldn't handle it uh, he has in an apartment so we bought him for a fraction of that price a very small fraction of that price anyway let's get started so here's the story i am upgrading getting my car ready for storm season 2021 i am official skywarn storm spotter <laughs> in 9yo kind of funny it says oklahoma city there but i've got missouri plates I haven't gotten my plates yet uh getting a license in missouri is incredibly difficult it's there's like a six or eight week lag time you have to have an appointment you can't just go in and get it it's ridiculous people will show up at 7 a.m they'll wait there all day long and not get their license so i haven't even got my license yet but mine hasn't expired anyway we we're upgrading this car a lot of people were like those things are crap i installed this and it's actually pretty good i've had no with 25 watts i'm hitting repeaters that are 15 miles away no problem had a conversation the other day repeater and uh he said i was full quieting perfect it works it's good enough you push 25 watts through this you're gonna be fine you know it could probably be better but don't worry about glass mount i mean okay i made a mistake so i wanted to put two radios in here at first i wanted a two meter 70 70 70 centimeter radio this radio here is one of the cheapest ones i found qyt it's a very tiny two meter it's a kt it is so tiny i love it so i bolted it here i haven't run the wires in it yet and that's what i'm going to do today this thing is awesome though with a programming cable and chirp i was able to program it to all the oklahoma city tulsa and joplin repeaters and it works great okay then i heard that i was also going to put a cb in here cb radio just because i want to cover that that also so i'm going to need at least two antennas but I wish I hadn't bought that now because I bought a GMRS radio, a really nice one, and it has the capabilities of that with it. So you get GMRS, two meters, 70 centimeters. I'm actually gonna remove this radio, probably use it as a base station here, and then install the GMRS, two meter, 77 centimeter, and a CB, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. It's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be I'm not, this isn't a how-to really, this is just what I'm doing. I'm not an expert at this. I've been dreading installing this in my car for so long because getting through the firewall on this to me has been such a pain in the butt idea that I just never wanted to accomplish it. So I went online, I went to YouTube and I saw this guy and he took a screwdriver and he found a grommet and he shoved a screwdriver in it. Then on the other side, he found where it came through and he found a way to get passed through. Well. So what I did was I went in here and started looking and there was a screwdriver in there. Somebody had put a screwdriver, like somebody that worked on my car had shoved a screwdriver in there already. I'm like, what the heck is this? It's already done for me. All right, so I've got a flashlight. I'm going to show you the hole that I found that I can go through. See that screwdriver right there? That was just there. I have no idea how that happened. Anyway, I can go through that hole and it, I saw it on the other side too, and get to the battery. So, and I don't know if you can see it, but back there is where the screwdriver comes out. So I can pull it, pull the wire through there. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna route it. Maybe just kind of come around the edge like that and go to the battery. Now here is the BTEC GMRS 50. This is a 50 watt radio, it's very nice. This is what I should have bought instead of the other one. Uh, I got my GMRS 
FCC license seventy dollars right now. It sucks, but it's ten years. And I also got a magnet mount for it. I might just use the one I've got there. Uh, the one I've already got the glass mount. And of course, I've got to worry about fuses. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. A fuse in between the battery and the wire. So, this is a very nice radio. It's got GMRS, 2 meters, 70 centimeters. I already use Chirp. Chirp, if you don't know what that is, is the best program. It's got like every radio. You just plug this cable. Now, this cable came with it. It actually works on that other little radio also that I have in the car over there, that QIT. So you plug it in here, you plug it in your USB, you go to Chirp, and you you can go to, Chirp has a setting in it where you can click repeaters and you can go to an area like 50 miles and just it'll just upload all of them to here, to your radio. It's so nice and easy nowadays. If you want to see that, there's videos out there for that, of course, but if you want to see that, let me know. So I got this mag mount, possibly I might use it. And, well, Here's the radio, and I got, for the first time in a very long time, I got a CB radio and a, a magnet mount for that as well, which I have not tuned. Now the CB radio is mostly for, I wanna hear the traffic that's out there. I'm not into CB or anything, but I wanna hear what's going on. A lot of people might have radios that are storm chasing, storm spotting, and they may only have this. They may not have that. So I'm gonna be covered with two meters, four, 440, GMRS and CB. I'm gonna have two radios in the car and a bunch of antennas and it's gonna look cool, isn't it? That puppy is eating everything. He eats everything. I saw him eat a laundry sheet the other day. I'm putting these terminals on here now. I wish they had some that were a little bit bigger, but this is all I've got. I put the terminals on there and I also put these heat, heat tubings on there so I end up with this. I like to do things right. I even solder it just for, just for kicks. By the way, if you don't have a good stripper tool, I said stripper, you need one. This one is pretty good. I'll put a link in the description for all the stuff, but you need some kind of stripper tool. I had, so the problem was, so the problem was here's my cable and it's not long enough. I kind of laid it out. So I'm gonna need to make an extension. So I'm gonna cut this, join it to that and then join that back to that and we'll have an extension and i'm gonna do all that right now okay so here's my wire i added the extension piece in the middle i use shrink shrink wrap but i went ahead and put tape on it also electrical tape just because if something pokes through i don't want to touch in anything metal so i've got my extension that will go to the battery that will go to the car and there are the fuses if you ever do this, you have to have fuses. I might need to put some toroids. I heard you're supposed to put toroids around this to redu reduce alternator wind, and I might do that. I might do that later. But anyway, let's run this through here and see if it works. Being me, I want to have the right tool for the job. I got this grabby tool, and what it is is you squeeze this, and this little claw comes out. And it grabs whatever. I'm going to grab that wire down there and pull it through. Hopefully. It'll be like that. So I decided I'm going to take my grabby tool, poke it through there, open it up, grab it, and pull it back through this way. So thank God for this thing. Ten bucks. I figured I would use this. You know, sometimes you drop things down the sink and stuff. I would probably use this. I got kids. We're always grabbing things. So here we go. I got my grabby tool and you got to have somebody else squeeze it while you put the thing on. I'm going to connect it to that and pull it through. 
Okay, so I had my wife grab it. I'm gonna tape it like that and pull it through. Let me tell you something, that literally took me 45 minutes to do this part. It was horrible. So that grommet in there, it's like this big bubble and it's got layers. So if you put your screwdriver through it, you'll hit another layer and then another layer. And each one of those layers, when you do the screwdriver, is tiny. So I had to keep going and going and going. I finally decided to just start cutting it. It was very difficult to get through. I finally pushed this through it. I finally realized that the screwdriver is not going to be big enough. So now I'm going to tape that up and pull it through. And man, that sucked. That was worse than I thought. I thought once the screwdriver was through, we were done. No, that sucked. So I'm not taking any chances with this coming off. I, it's both held on there and I've also got tape. And if it works, the problem is that grommet is so tight. It's just so difficult to get to. I hate working on cars for that reason. All right, here's the moment of truth. I got it through, but it cost me 10 bucks. I lost my grabby tool. Oh well, that sucked. But here it is. Whew. All so I could just save not having to put in the cigarette lighter. Okay, it's taken me a lot longer than I thought. I try to be very careful. And so what I've done here is I connected the hot to hot. <laughs> I noticed that this cable was connected to the chassis, the negative side, the ground side. So I connected over here. That way I didn't have to mess with the battery. I was trying to think about the best I could do is zip tie and stay away from the hot parts because I was thinking, what if something melted and we had an exposed wire? So I'm going to keep an eye on it. I made a mistake when I routed this I should have gone around around down there in the base but I didn't and now it's too late so I don't really want it touching this stuff but it's kind of in the way if we ever have to have it fixed or something it's kind of in the way not the prettiest thing ever but this is the first time I've ever done this and getting through that firewall was a huge success so I think I'm done on the outside let's take a look on the inside it's funny it's January and uh, it's chilly it's probably 36 degrees but you know it's it's not that bad all right now i have not tucked these wires away but what i'm looking for i wanted to have my radio here where i put it boy these screws were really hard to put in they're very very flaky like they really need to be in perfectly it's hard to do because you can't see when you're on the other side Anyway, I got this here because I want it up high. I want to be able to see. I had the radio down here that I removed. And I don't want to take my eyes off the road. So I wanted it up here so I could watch and do this at the same time. So if I'm doing this, I can still see something coming at me. If I cross the road or something stupid. Um, this is an old car now. It's a 2010 Honda Fit. And it's 2021. It's roughly 11 years old. And uh, I don't mind drilling holes in it now. So I'm drilling holes everywhere. I drilled right into this. I like that there's a little gap here and kind of cool it off or something. Um, so what I'm looking for is I'd like to run this back here and out of the way, but I want something to kind of pin it down. I want something where I could screw this into here and it holds it down nice and neat all the way across here. And then I don't know what to do about that, but I want to of course hide these. And then I've got the antenna, my old antenna running back through here and it's the glass mount and I haven't had any problems with it, but I might still use the, I was thinking about using that magnet mount. I cut myself by the way, getting up under that car. Ugh. Anyway, I was thinking about using the magnet mount here and drilling a hole through the roof and, and running the cable through over here instead of having the cable all the way underneath, I could run the cable that way. I was thinking if I drilled a hole, I put the magnet mount here, drill a hole and then put some sealant around it, kind of, yeah, I think it'd be sharp. It might kind of cut the cut the coax in, but I got to figure out what's underneath here so I can run it down there and right to the radio. And then I was going to install the CB today, the CB radio, but I ran out of time way too much. So let me know in the description if you have any ideas about hiding these wires and tying them up. And let's fire up the radio, see if it works. Okay, so that's that's something I have to think about. I need to tilt it down a little bit. It's kind of pointed this way. I could accidentally leave it on now that it's connected to the battery. 
I could accidentally leave it on and it would drain the battery. I gotta remember, turn that off. <laughs> Probably won't be a problem. All right, so I've got it pointed right now. You can adjust the back end up and down to kind of give it, and now I'm looking straight at it. I wish it was tilted that way now that I think about it, but that's good enough. This is great because I can, I can scroll along and watch the road at the same time. Feels really good. Um, taking it inside to program is a pain in the butt because you'd have to unscrew all four of these and bring it in and then to the computer. And I don't have a laptop. So now I had put this over here for that other radio. I don't think it's going to work there anymore because now I'll be doing that all the time. If you fix one thing, you'll be save yourself a million miles of this crap, you know, doing that. But for now, I'll leave it here. So I got to hide these wires. Got the radio. Let's see if we can hear anything. I should start the car up, actually. All right, you guys are going to be with me when I tear off the sticker. There we go. So I like how it, I don't fully understand this radio, but I like how it shows you a display of at least the call sign of these are repeaters. I don't know any of these, but I'm going to hit scan, see if there's anything out there. GMRS channels, 1 through about 22. I also have the weather channels on there, the NOAA weather, but I don't have it scan those. So I'm going to stop this. Oops, that's going to happen a lot. I go up to these. So I have the two meter call frequency here. Uh, I forgot, 14652, I think. I, have this, I didn't even know there was a 70 centimeter call, but that was put in there by Chirp program. And there's the weather. There's a weather advisory is in effect for the about, overnight hours. Snow accumulations up to two will be possible. Wow, snow? Are you kidding me in Oklahoma? Portions of western North Texas. Uh, there's some 10 different channels. I put them all in there. Or eight, nine. There's 10 different weather channels. I put them all in there in case I'm somewhere else. It's a different frequency. All right, guys, let me know what you think. I'm not going to hit a repeater right now because I don't feel like starting a conversation and and the last two times I, I hit a repeater here and I said I was listening, someone came back. And I'm really tired. I'm going to put all this crap up and I'm done. Thanks for joining me. Leave a comment. Uh, this was not a how-to video. This was me struggling and showing you what I'm doing. That's all it was. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. All right, bye. And then this just arrived to complete the awesomeness. I really do have to do that now, don't I? <laughs> In nine miles.